I own all of this. We're gonna turn this place around. I'm gonna make you rich. Uh, you're, you, you're Tommy Vassetti, but I thought that you were... That's right. We're gonna be making some changes around here and start making some real money. Actually, have you ever thought about, um... But first, we're gonna need some good-looking bras. Yeah, girls are fine, but you, <laughs> wow. What's that guy think this is, some free art crap? Geez, like anyone ever watch movies about fish? the hit show, Just the Five of Us, where he appears as the rich father of a family of misfits. But more recently, he's working on a controversial theater piece, In the Future, There Will Be Robots. Claude, Matt did not. Hey, Welcome dude, to the show. Thanks, Amy. However, you have mispronounced my name. It's Madge, which rhymes with badge. Uh, as in duh. And no, as in more than you. Madge no. Anyway, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to discuss my art. Yes, you're so funny. Now, Claude, you're an interesting man, if you don't mind me saying so myself. Because on the one hand, you're on the funniest show in the whole wide world, just the five of us, and on the other, you do those weird theater dance shows which aren't... Yo, Candy, I'm looking for movie talent. You interested? Sure. But you'd have to talk to my agent. The hell are you doing? You should have stayed at home today. Can you believe this, asshole? Now you can. Struggle going on within all of us, between man and machine, between the angel and the beast. It's as if Petrushka and Leonard Bernstein were in a ferocious dance competition with switch play. So it's a bit like just the five of us. What a show! I really love Jimmy. He's so cute. Even the oh god. Just the five of us is anything other than a worshipless hat. I need to support my serious art. It's like stealing a boombox to do live interpretive dance. If I bring joy to people's hearts doing an interpretation... Come on, let's go. ...derived from art, as a man, as a creator, and that is this. Never overestimate the dreadfulness of the mass market, the degrading excess of the culture, or the horrors that we all have with the Great, yeah, um, me too. But, as Mr. Chesterfield, you're so funny! What is it you say? Not in my house! As they say in France, matrice. Not in my house. Please, I came on your fine show to discuss art, not people that pour themselves out on the altar of commercial success, dancing like a puppet alongside a genetic freak. Although, I do that too. Okay, Moody. So, what do you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know. My performance at the Hollywood Bowl, perhaps. Mercedes. Hey, Tommy. You want a party? Not now, sweets. You interested in doing some movies? Of course, as long as it's cheap and sleazy. <laughs> You're hired. Get in. Very working class people that there is something enervating about a modern dance You're performance. Right, that seeing in the future there will be robots will change your life, no matter what your...
Kaczynski, free his soul from the bondage of the past. And then on stage, we have snow that falls and represents love in all its forms. The robot makes a snow angel, and we begin to cry. Close curtain. Um, okay. Well, I love just the five of us. Please, 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 enough! Five succeeds while robots starve. Attendance has been poor. If I were opening this with the Orchestra Philharmonica di Jalapa in Mexico, there would be riots in the streets with small children giving me flowers and weeping. Here in Vice City, they wouldn't know art unless it came as a tube of beef jerky. They told me, Claude, it can't be done. Vice City is for sun worshippers and Philistines, and I told them no. I told them if I'm directing a work of commercial dross down there, I must save my soul with some serious art. But to be honest, Amy, they were <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel ahead of my time. The best artists are ignored. I mean, surely any right-minded person would rather spend an hey, evening Tommy, watching me Tommy, you coming in for a warm-up? Maybe later, babe. They move delicately across the stage in the dance of desire and denigration than flopping around in a disco or a nightclub or sucking the electric teat of... Whoa! I know I'm cool good. shark. How's filming going, Steve? Well, Candy is a natural. And that new girl, she's insatiable. She went through half the cast and crew before I even took a light reading. Anyway, hey, tomorrow we're going on location to shoot the boat scenes. Boat scenes? What boat scenes? The fishermen are in the throes of passion when the giant shark comes in. What'd I say about the giant shark? <sighs> I said, no giant shark, all right? Just keep the cameras Pointed at the poon tag. Okay, okay. Hey, Tommy, you guys got to try, right? Get those flyers printed up. Yeah, but nobody's going to let us distribute those things. I mean, they're just too, uh, they're unimaginative. You don't worry about that. I've got my own ideas for distribution. Okay. Hey, Candy, uh, in my trailer. Sometimes life throws you a curveball. We help our blue chip clients get their lives back after circumstances have conspired against them. Just listen. It was an unfortunate accident what happened to my wife on that precarious cliff. The Leo and Furax can't bring my wife back, but they made sure I didn't end up in the slammer. I was unfortunate enough to be found 15 kilos in my spare time. I was so mad at the auto repair shop that sold me that tire. Thanks to Dealey on Furax, the district attorney saw it that way too. I, I accidentally torched a quickie mart when my medication ran out. <laughs> Dealey on Furax helped me and the community by ensuring a healthy settlement from the pharmaceutical company. At Dealey and Furax, we understand the judicial system and will ensure the truth is heard, no matter how improbable. We're not cheap, but what price can you put on truth? Call the Leo and Furax today at 866-974-2333. That's 866-9-SHADY. The Leo and Furax. Accidents happen, and we'll prove it. The store leading the fight against communism is having a blowout sale. Ammunition has a wide array of peacemakers. Come by Ammunition on Militia Mondays, exercise your Second Amendment rights, and get 10% off all armor-piercing bullets. We're the only gun store that lets you try it before you buy it. Need anti-tank missiles? We've got them. Flamethrowers? Oh, yeah. No credit? No problem. No money down? 90 days, same as cash. Shoot now, pay later. During the 10-minute waiting period, fire up a few rounds of the Ammunition gun range, featuring faces of famous Bobby Pinkson. Come by ammunition and register to win an anti-aircraft gun actually used when we whooped Australia's ass. This weekend is the Ammunition Film Festival. 
available with three screenings of the documentary Red Dawn. Ammunition. Protecting your rights. You're back on Day Chat with me, Amy, and my special guest. Let's go to the phones. Mr. Maginot, Bruce from Porn Island here. Big fan of the show, Mr. Magno, big fan. Dude, I don't know about this, the robot thing, it, it, it's weird. What's he, is he really 42? Does he shop in the kids' aisle? Does he get on a roller coaster rides? I mean, what's the deal? Does he pay half price for the movie? No comment. Next caller. Oh my god, trauma. I meant that, that's my line. I'm supposed to say that. Oh god, this guy is such a dick. Uh, next caller. Oh, who's on the line? I mean, who's on the line? Oh, what number is it? Who, who's on the line? Hello, Claude. This is Morgan. I'm just vacationing down here, having finished my doctoral thesis into images of young boys in post-lapsarian Greece and the erotic understatement of the fugue in contemporary Baroque. Fascinating stuff. Do you have a question? I'm confused. No, woman. I just wanted to tell Claude about my thesis and discuss his bleaker death in Venice street period. Of course I have a question, you silly girl. Claude, I saw robots. Big fan, and that's praise indeed coming from me. I normally hate anything humanity has achieved since 1836, but one thing fascinated me. Claude, about the show, the pants. They were so tight, so fitted. How do you get such a marvelous, close, sequin figure hugging fit and still? Hmm? Oh, and were the sequins a reference to lasers? Yes, yes, my, my, I agree. Thanks for calling. That is an important question. You see, I'm an important person, and I especially think so. It is really important for people to see my form move through space in very tight pants, or the effect is ruined. Interpretive dance cannot be expressed in baggy clothing. It's like a violin parade. Otherwise, why have a love story with a manatee and the lasers? It's very important. You're kind of creepy. You're nothing like you are on the show. You're so funny there, joking with the family and putting out the fires started by the homeless guy and starting group hugs. But in real life, you're just plain creepy. You won't even tell us how old Jimmy is. All you talk about is archy stuff like that nobody understands because it's complicated and how tight your pants are. That's not true. I also discussed love and passion and amenity and the lasers. You, my dear, could use all three. You, my dear, are a Philistine. I'm sorry, but this is one of the most degrading, debasing, horrific, unedifying, opportunistic things I have ever done in my life since that whole Rake's Progress lawnmower commercial. I feel dirty, like I just sat in something. Seat, I shall bid you adieu. Oh. Every important guest who doesn't dance like a weird jerk. We'll be back right after this. You're on K Chat. Knights of the Road. Sonny. Sonny. Obviously, you are suffering from hearing problems, so I'll try again. Where's the goddamn money? Where's the goddamn stuff? And where's my gun? Are you new action? You are making an idiot out of me, Tommy. And I'm not laughing yet. Okay, what's the problem now? Shh. After his close encounter with the Nympho invaders, our hero finds himself unable to think of anything but this huge phallic mountain. And that's when I want to do the scene with the vat of mashed potatoes, but then we... Don't give a crap about that! Just keep going, keep going. You mentioned something about some legal problem on the phone. Congressman Alex Shrub has jumped on the pre-election bandwagon. He's going after the Puritan vote. Rumors are he's going to support measures to restrict, shall we say, the more fleshy aspects of this nation's mm -hmm. great entertainment oh, yeah. industry. Okay, all right. Okay. Candy, okay, you know Shrub. Okay, you guys get up to anything Bob. kinky? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. All right, there. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Tony. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. Tony, you got that. Was that part of the, uh, was she talking to? Hey, I can never tell. Anyway, you're probably best following her after the shoot. See if she'll lead you to their new love nest. You got a camera? Yeah, get him a camera. Contribute to the Pastor Richard Salvation Statue Fund. Pick up your telephone. Call now. 1-866-9-SAVE-ME. Hi, and welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're listening to K-Chat, by City's only commercial talk station. The place where the stars shine in conversation with you and me. I'm Amy Schechenhausen. My next guest is a rising star in the world of Norse mythology. He's appeared in several best-selling infomercials and travels the globe speaking at corporate training camps. His books and audio cassettes are sold around the world. <laughs> he is Valhalla's finest deity and motivational speaker, Thor. Hi. Hello, Amy. I'm happy to be here. It's been a long journey. Uh, yeah. Now, I don't know much about you. I mean, I read Beowulf. Well, I didn't, but I read the cover. But, like, you're a Viking, right? Did the tunic and goatskin boots give you a clue, maybe? I am a Viking, and a Viking that will not only help you unleash the Furies, but unleash yourself. It's in my Thor's Horsepower program. Okay. I'm a little confused. Well, I'm a lot confused. I was taught in school that Vikings were bloodthirsty and violent. An elder once told me, you must unlearn what you have learned. Of course, then he died of the green thing. There are some Vikings that are a bloodthirsty lot, yes, but no more than anyone else, really. We're a nomadic people, Amy. We have cold fire in our soul. He had that fire too, Amy. You've just lost it since you've gotten television. Now, that being said, I'll answer your question. We are mostly nonviolent, though so many of the Vikings traveled to Scotland. And mind you, anyone who goes there will turn bloodthirsty. You can't understand what a lot are saying. It's all a floor, reckless, a boot, a It's enough to make you want to burn a village to the ground. That's why, in my cassette series, I talk about the importance of communication. You see, Amy, men and women live in different worlds. We use different words. A group of men talk about what they've killed, how to start a fire, who has the best long boat. Women want to talk about keeping it along, a tidy, and their feelings. When I'm raiding a village, I don't need to be talking about feelings. It's time for action. Great. So is that all there is to being a Viking? Pillaging? No, lass, no. Pillaging and battle are important. But we admire poetry as well. As long as it's poems about whacking someone in with a double-handed battle axe. What's holding you back, Amy? In chapter 3 of my book, I talk about listening to the bloodthirsty water spirit. It's really quite important if you want to enter Valhalla. I think I went there last night. Oh, no, mm -mm, that was Malibu. But it's the same sort of thing. Valhalla was that golf club, wasn't it? So hey. Great. But right, what does being a Viking have to do with anything? This uh, is the 20th century. Yeah. We have Could like you call me Martha? Oh, Alex. I mean Martha. I don't, but what a oh, The operation is really gross. You live like it's 982 AD or something. Mind ye tongue, wench, lest I cut it out. Deep down, all of you listening to me say, Thor, yes, I'd like to unleash the Viking within. Maybe you'll go camping once a year or hunting and wonder why it feels so natural. That's because it is. Too much of this denying your instincts. Men shaving. You know, deep down in the pit of your soul, you wish you could crouch in the grass with flies biting your face, afraid to move for fear of alerting the beast, covering yourself with yak deer and thwart your spell. Then, a beast draws close. You bounce.
Oh, Martha, someone's watching. How kinky. You, give me that camera. Sorry, but I just can't swallow oh, this right on, now. come on, darling. He's hung like a sperm whale, for pity's sake. How can you not feel the part? But, Stevie... 
Now's my star director. Oh, man, the struggle between mm. the artistic integrity and the humping, pumping action continues unabated. <laughs> and before you ask, yes, all four videos will be released mm. by their... Honey, can you please keep the Andacon and the shoddy cost more per hour than you do? Oh, sorry, Steve. I was thinking, we need some kind of big stunt to really promote the launch. Mm. Something that will make a real impact on this city. You got any ideas? Well, in the old days, they used to have gala events, stars, limos, the night sky crisscross with searchlights. Searchlights. I got an idea. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, little sequin numbers and the limos. Uh, oh, mm. premieres. Oh, yes, uh, ma'am. Of course, yeah. ma'am. And mm. the press and the barrage of lights. until you try. We're back on K-Chat with me, Amy, and my guest is Thor, Viking warrior and elf help guru. Do you have a last name? Oh, whatever. Anyway, what were we talking about? We were talking about the wisdom of the ancients. There are many hurdles in life, Amy. I remember one of the first bits of fan mail I got. It came by bottle in the sea. A man of Lollard Island said, a tiny woman came to our farm and swept in front of our door. A woodland troll has carried off my woman in the dead of night. Give me wisdom, Thor. So, what did you tell him? Hi, Amy. It was obvious the Black Plague had visited his home. As sure as you can't be a midwife to a fairy, expect wisdom from a fool, or find a good meal downtown on a Saturday night. Okay. I don't, um, I really have nothing to ask you because I really don't think we're bonding quite right here. I'm more than a little confused. Let's go to the... <laughs> You're on K-Chat with Thor. Hello, Thor. My name's Jay. I'm a huge fan, man. Everyone else was into vampires and stuff. I just got into the Viking thing. It's pretty cool. It's been working pretty well for me. Anyway, my girlfriend and I, we fight all the time. She's always calling to check up on me. It really totally sucks. It's a drag. Like, I hang out at the strip mall with all my boys, and she shows up. Is there any advice you can give me? Ah, uh, yes. There was a man who asked for a night's lodging at a certain farm on the eve of Maundy Thursday, or maybe it was Fat Tuesday. Anyway, in the course of the night, the old woman of the house took out a horn of salve and smeared herself with it from head to toe. She then climbed on top of the stove, sat astride a sweeping broom. Hello? Excuse me, what the hell are you talking about? Reading from the runes, wench! What kind of rune? Ah. Special. Especially in the back seat, if you know what I mean, Thor. Then behead her and parade thy love around on a stick for the world to admire. Wow, cool. Thanks, Thor. Okay, I'd like to throw you out, but you've got an enormous... <gasps> Oh, behead your girlfriend and take her head around on a stick. Hello, you're on K-Chat with Thor. Hey, brother, my name is TJ. Your book is fresh, real fresh. Like it's been a real inspiration and all that. It's most definitely on me and my crew's vibe. And that Loki brother, he's as slick as Salivex. You know what I mean, Trooper? In fact, me and my boys have started a Thor fan club. You know what I'm rapping? We're on your vibe, man. Hi, a Thor fan club. This pleases Thor very much. I shall speak of myself in the third person from now on. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't really into school all that much, but I hear you, Thor. So, so anyway, we have this fan club, right? And instead of naming it something like the Vice Lords of Valhalla, we gave it, like, a modern name. Keeping things firmly in the 80s, you know? The blood. Ain't that off the wall, man? We follow your teachings to the letter, sir. Especially how you go around smiting fools with that wild mad hammer of yours and getting people to know exactly what time it is, you hear? Have you a magic hammer? Nah, T. We don't have any old types around here to strap us with super fly hardware like yours, but we do have Mac-10, Tech-9, Tray-8, Street Sweepers, and all that. You still on my vibe, brother? Hey, I like the sound of this. He thinks I want to join the group. Do you pillage proper? Hell yeah! We do it like a Viking. We shall meet. Till then. The yours. 
Those wings on the side are wicked, money. Stop calling me a wench. I have much to teach you, wench Amy. Only if you... Why is my fatted calf gone after the gypsy woman appeared? Are there trolls living in my chimney? I sure, I could tell you the story of the twelve children on a platter, or the midsummer snow, and the spirit hatched from a cock's egg. But in the end, Amy, you need a spirit journey. A wandering spirit demands a wandering body. Take a long boat. Pack only what you can carry. That was Thor, Viking warrior. Coming up next, we have another guest. We'll be back right after this. How do you like to enjoy a Rusty Brown's ring donut? I like to lick lovingly around the outside and then thrust my tongue in the middle. I like to munch it vigorously. I just love the bat all over my face. On Friday nights, I just can't stop eating Rusty Brown's ring donuts. Oh my god, it's so good. Sometimes I like to wear women's panties and walk around Fifth Street. When you go downtown, make sure you enjoy Rusty Brown's Ring Donuts. Hi, I'm Jeremy Robar, entrepreneur, VIP, and founder of the Revolutionary Program, Think Your Way to Success. It's a three-step program that's been changing lives and my income for the last two years. Five years ago, I was a nobody, just like you. After my Think Your Way to Success program, I spend the entire weekend in my jacuzzi or engaging in the exciting sport of domino topping. Hey, if you can think it, you can do it. One of my award-winning courses is sure to be perfect for you. The first course I call Think, Hold That Thought, Complete, because that's what you do. Step two is known as Learn, Start, Doing, where I explain the mysteries of starting. Or take the new accelerated course that will have you laughing and hugging strangers. Motivate, demonstrate, then motivate again. Just listen to these endorsements, and remember, these people volunteer. They aren't being paid much. I've been on the Think, Hold That Thought Complete program, and I have to say, I'm finally going to start my career in being a well-paid, rich person. Yeah, I've been thinking that way too. Call now and sign up for my Think Your Way to Success program. And if you want to think really fast, try my Crank It Out program. Call 1-866-434-SELF. Hey, don't just do it. Thank <laughs> you.